coming to you from Corner Music here in Nashville, Tennessee. Today we're going to talk about restringing an acoustic guitar. I don't care what you've seen. I don't care what you've heard. It's all wrong. This is how you do it. I'm about to show you. Hey guys, this is Nolan with Corner Music here in Nashville, Tennessee. Today I'm going to show you how to restring an acoustic guitar. Alright, what I have in front of me is Gibson's Custom Shop Koa Backside J45. Alright, let's begin. First, I'm going to loosen the strings. This is a must. It's the Power Peg Pro by Ernie Ball. If you're doing multiple guitars throughout the day, this will save your arm. All right, now that I have the strings loosened, I'm gonna grab my cutters. We're gonna come over here and pull out the bridge pins. Very carefully lift the bridge pin, pull out the string and set it to the side. All right, now I'm gonna come over here and take the string off the post. If it was strung properly, it should come off very easily. All right. I'm gonna take my dry microfiber cloth and just wipe off any excess dust. All right, next, I'm gonna look at the frets. Daddario and Planet Ways have come up with this really cool system called the fret polishing system. They've got a little template and it's a little buffing pad. You simply put it over the frets and you buff. I'm just going to quickly go up the fretboard. This will knock off some of the oils and, and grime that's built up from playing the guitar. Also, it'll give you op an opportunity to examine the fret and see if there's any divots or excessive fret wear. All right. Next, I'm going to put some lemon oil on the fretboard. Every manufacturer has a brand of lemon oil. Today I'm using Music Nomads F1. Remember, use a separate cloth for oils and polishes. Don't use your dry cloth. I'm going to apply a small amount. It doesn't take much. And I'm going to work this into the fretboard. Now, to keep it off the body, I've got a little template. This is something I've just made.
Again, it doesn't take much. The lemon oil hydrates the fretboard and it also cleans and conditions it. Usually I have a little excess. What I'll do is come over here, take out the bridge pins, remove the saddle carefully, and just wipe a little of the excess on the bridge. Again, it doesn't take much. This is something you can do two or three times a year. All right, now it's time to put the strings on. Today I'm using Gibson strings, 12 to 53. I'm gonna put the saddle back in. All right, I'm gonna take the ball end of the string. I'm gonna make sure that my slot on the bridge pin is facing the string. So it's facing the headstock. I'm gonna lower the string. I'm gonna push down on the bridge pin and pull up on the string. And then I'm just gonna repeat that process. So again, I'm taking the ball end of the string, I'm facing the slot on the bridge pin, I'm going to lower the string, push down on the bridge pin and pull up on the string. You'll know that the pin is seated properly when you pull up on the string. If I pull up on the string and the pin comes up, obviously it hasn't been seated properly. So again, I'm going to lower it, push down on the bridge pin and pull up on the string. You can tell that string is seated properly. And one more. Lower the ball end of the string, push down on the bridge pin, pull up on the string. All right. I'm gonna just put this soft microfiber cloth over the guitar while I pull the strings down to cut them. All right, I'm gonna start with my sixth string, my low E. I'm gonna pull it all the way down to the post that's being wrapped. This is the E string post. This is the one to be wrapped. I'm gonna go one beyond and I'm gonna cut. And I'm just gonna repeat that. Here's my A string, my fifth string. This is the post to be wrapped. I'm gonna go one beyond and I'm gonna cut. D string, this is the post to be wrapped. I'm going to pull it back one, mark it, and cut. Here's my G string. This is the post being wrapped. I'm going to pull it back one, mark, and cut. Here's our B string. This is the post. I'm going to go one beyond and cut. And finally, the E string. This is the post being wrapped. I'm gonna go one beyond and cut. All right. Now, let's wind the string. I'm gonna start with my, my low E. I'm gonna feed the post. I'm gonna have just a wee bit sticking out the other side. I'm gonna put a slight bend in the string. There's some different methods of doing this. What I prefer, to go over once and the rest under.
By cutting the string to that length, it ensures that I'm getting at least two full wraps on each post. By going over and under, as you can see, it's pinching the end of the string between the two wraps, the one above and the one below. Plus, the string is making contact with the post. I don't have strings wrapping over themselves. Let's go to the A string. Again, I'm gonna feed the post. I'm gonna have just a wee bit sticking out the other end. A quick bend, just to get that to settle in. One over. The rest under. Again, you can see the end of the strings being pinched by the two wraps. All the strings are making direct contact with the post. All right, here we go with our D string. Feed the post, slight bend. Over. I'm not bringing it up to pitch, I'm just taking the slack out of the strings. All right, our G string, feed the post, put a slight bend in it. Here we go with our B string. I'm going to feed the post. As you can see, put a quick bend in it. Notice we're always feeding the string from the inside and wrapping to the outside of the post. The reason I don't put knots in the strings or wrap over or refeed through the post, if you're in a Turing situation and you break a string, you've got to be able to get that string off as quickly as possible, get a new string on, get it stretched out and ready for the next song. So often if you've got a thousand wraps or if it's been refed through the post or you've got some kind of a knot in it, it takes three times as much to remove it. Often you're having to grab some needle nose to refeed that string through the post. It's just not worth it. You won't have it ready for the next song. All right, so here's our last one. Over and under. Again, I'm not bringing it up to pitch. I'm just taking the slack out of the string. All right, we're gonna go back to the bridge. We're gonna make sure that our strings are lined up properly. We're gonna make sure the bridge pins are seated properly. And it's time to tune up the guitar. Always tune up to the pitch, never down. You know, it's best to tune by hand. If you use a drill or even a handheld crank, sometimes you can over crank and break a string. Now here's a step that's often overlooked and left out, stretching the strings. If you stretch the strings, they will settle in more quickly, they will stay in tune better, 
and you will tighten up any slack that might, may have formed at the post or the bridge. So all I'm going to do is just lightly stretch the string, just going between the nut and the saddle. Alright, now we're going to retune. You will hear that the string has dropped. there we have it. I'm going to wipe the guitar down. Again, every manufacturer has some type of a polish. Uh, most of them are suited for all instruments. This does have a nitrocellulose finish on it, so I would try to use something that's suitable for that. And here we go. Mm -hmm.